Hello everyone, and welcome. Today at the Proving Grounds, we're checking out our inner selves, as we look and take a look at Distraint 2. Distraint 2 is a continuation of Distraint 1, so FYI, spoilers for the ending of Distraint 1. So, at the end of Distraint 1, Price couldn't deal with many of the things he did for the sake of being successful in business decide to commit suicide with a shotgun and leaving a suicide note. What goes around comes around. And the game ended with the sound of a shotgun going off. Distraint 2, after a quick recap of the first game, begins with Price, our protagonist from Distraint 1, awakening in a park on a bench. Confused and bewildered at the fact that he shouldn't exist, he shouldn't be here. But he is. Confused and bewildered, an old man approaches him, claiming to be called Weezen, telling Price he must find hope. Hope to continue in his life. Price, confused, doesn't understand what's going on as Weezen sends him on his journey to hopefully find hope in the world. Along this journey, you also encounter Greed, who wishes Price to return to his ways that he was in Distraint 1 to be a successful businessman. The tone of the game is very different from Distraint 1. Well, Distraint 1 was about the morale's decisions of dealing with the different tenants of the houses and land in Distraint 1. Distraint 2 is about Price himself, his own inner self, his morals of himself, and his hope to continue in this world. The Strength 2 does do a number of different uh, changes to the Strength 1. While it doesn't involve combat or anything, there are things that can kill you more than just the elephant that was in the Strength 1, as several other monstrous creatures will prowl the hallways and wombs that little Distraint 2. This incorporated a system of hiding, so it kind of went in a kind of a clock tower direction. My experience with messing around with them, though, is they're all preset and they're very easy. As far as I could tell, there isn't like random chances or anything, so they're not like clock tower enemies will they continuously stalk you through the stages as you wander around so well and this nice touch from distraint one which only had the elephant which literally only appeared two times two times or was it three but still like virtually not a lot and it was the only thing that could kill you but in Distraint 2, there are multiple things, along with the return of the elephant. So, I think it's a nice little touch, but it's still really easy. On top of that, there are a few little puzzles little in the game, which was also a nice touch, since the first game was mostly a just kind of a click, click and point kind of a fail of a story. So, it, it built a little bit on top of that, and on top of the gameplay, there is the nice lift of more better looking graphics. Compared to Distraint 1, 2 looks even better with its graphical style, along with better lighting, nice ambient movement of such trees and such. These are all nice effects with the game, and you can affect the film grain and the brightness. So if you want it to be less or more, you can control that. Now, you're basically going through events in Price's life, be it past, recent, and other events in his life throughout this game. To not get into direct spoilers. Overall, this journey feels a lot more psychological and personal to Price versus the kind of mood of the first game being more of his interactions on whether he considered his actions with other people being good or bad. This is a lot more of a personal story for Price. And is it a journey worth taking though? It's still a pretty simple affair of a kind of a point click kind of escapades as you still collect items to solve a few minor puzzles and things. But there are a few more, like I said, actual puzzles like there's a sliding puzzle and such. 
These are mostly minor and not really hard at all. It's a pretty simplistic game. I would say it's a little longer than the first game. But the presentation and everything is very nice upgrade from the first game. He did not just simply reuse all the assets of the first game and call it a sequel. He actually did put some nice effort in this music ambient and fits the mood. But uh, I wouldn't say it's anything I'm going to jam down the world. But it was both enjoyable while sometimes slightly disturbing with song tracks. But they fit the mood of what was going on and such. I can't really talk about it anymore about Destraint 2 without really getting the spoilers, so I'm just going to get uh, quickly my thoughts on the price and value and such. So, digitally, this game is $8.99 on PS4, Switch, Xbox One, and on PC. It is available DRM free on PC, so you have a great and wide a wide uh, amount of options of what you want to do with this game. Now, if you watched my Distraint 1 review, uh, you would know I am playing a physical version that was through PlayAsia's exclusive limited ones. Now, Distraint's Collector's Edition and its Standard Edition are both still in stock on PlayAsia. The Collector's Edition is $39.99, the Standard is $29.99. Now it says Distraint 2 is $8.99 and Distraint 1, I believe, is $5.99, I believe. Let me double check that real quick. Distraint 1 is $4.99. That was close. That was close. Close. It's $4.99. Honestly, for the standard version, I feel like for the two games, $19.99 would have been a more justifiable price. I do think $8.99 is a decent price for this game, though. It has a much bigger lift graphically and effect-wise over the first game, and I really liked the psychological take on examining prices in Okerador versus just going on about his job, which, not that that was a bad message or anything in that. These Both these games have very good messages in them, but I really lean towards the mood and direction of the story of the second game a lot. I really enjoyed it much more than the first game. So I definitely think the 899 price is a justifiable price. It's not a very lengthy game. You'll likely beat it in 2, 3, maybe 4 hours if you diddle that all a lot. There are a few little secrets to find in the game that I learned of after finishing the game. But nothing crazy, nothing too amazing, mind-boggling, just a few little fun sequences. But it's a nice, simple game, and like I said, you have a lot of choices, including do your own free on PC itself, so you can choose your preferred platform. But like I said, this is on the Switch. It is important to note, though, if you get this physical collection, there is a bug without, like, there is an update that fixes it, but... In the cartridge itself, there is a bug in Distraint 1, which can be circumvented by doing the right actions in the right order in the second tendant that you go meet. Otherwise, you have to start the game over, which is easy to get there again, but it is a little annoying. Uh, but it is fixed in the patch. It is not effective in the digital version of the Switch version. But it's only in Distraint 1. I did not experience any bugs or anything in Distraint 2, however. It was a nice, clean playthrough that I did not find any problems in it and have not heard of any problems in it. So, I do recommend checking out this game on whatever you personally prefer as your preferred platform. But anyway, with that said, I do think, like I said, the $8.99 price is a fair price. So, we go with even. I don't think it's undervalued or overvalued, but it is still a short experience. But with that, let's get into spoilers. So, I couldn't really talk about a lot of the story. It, it is pretty obvious, in my opinion, that Price is not in the real world. He's in some kind of dream world, and that's because he's in his own mind. The events that you're playing through are his mind, how his mind has become disorganized a mess and everything 
What's interesting is technically the game doesn't actually take place after Distraint 2, uh, the Distraint 1. It's actually taking place at the very same time as the ending of Distraint 1. Because what you find out by the end of this game as you meet all these different emotions of Price is that you're playing as Price's hope that has been long missing and was stored through and was stored by encountering the trauma and overcoming his trauma of losing his parents. As you did learn in the first game, his parents were dead, but it never went into it. And Distraint 2 goes over to the fact that Price lost his parents at a young age, and he never really mourned them. He never really took the time to grieve over it. And along with all his life problems, it grew into a lot of trauma in his mind. Finally overcoming this trauma, Price was able to awaken his hope, and Weizen explains that all this was happening in a split second as the real Price, the person that they're all connected to, is about to commit suicide, and that you are the only one that can convince him that there is hope in the world to live on, instead of to snuff his life out. And you walk over and convince Price that there is something still in the world to be hopeful for. As the game ends with the shotgun going off and Price didn't shoot himself, something had changed in him. And so, Price has a future full of hope to look forward to. I really liked it, the message of this game. Like, I really liked it. It's not a challenging game. It's not an insane game. But I really like the tone, the mood, and the way the game went about its characters. I like it. Like I said, outside of the big, big kind of mood swing of how the first and second game are, overall, they are nice little games. Whether it's a good value for the physical version... These are both DRM free, as I said, on PC. So, and obviously the cheap will getting them digitally. But I leave it to you to decide how you would want to buy these. It's definitely not the worst thing to spend twenty nine 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 on, but honestly, I think nineteen ninety nine would have been a more understandable price. As I always say, that the be fail when it comes to a minimal price for a physical edition, when you're buying it, you know, new, not like used secondhand. You know, 19.99 is a considered minimum, so I think that's a fair price myself. But, mm. but these are both still available on PlayAsia. I will have links down below if you want to support me affiliately for uh, those two games. I would avoid eBay for now because there are a lot of people trying to sell these for like 50 plus dollars on eBay when they're still in stock on PlayAsia, so if that's in your interest. If not, then, you know, you can go wherever a platform you want. But I do recommend checking out these two games. While simple, short, sure, and they're not there to challenge you in a skill-based sense, they are two old tales about your moles and about yourself. What a life is living worth. So, those are my thoughts on Distraint 2. I would check them out for whatever price you personally prefer, but I think they're all good value for the digital prices. Like I said, the physical version's a little more up in the air depending on you if you really, really want to own this uh, physically or not. But anyway, those are my thoughts. If you have any questions on Distraint 2, one or this collection feel free to leave a comment down below and thank you for checking out this video until next time i'll see you out there also if you feel like you want anything interesting feel free to leave a like and if you feel like you want nothing feel free to leave a dislike you free until next time be careful out there and always remember there's hope in the world there was meaning in our lives and we can always change it we can always better ourselves, and we can always find something worth living in this world, even when the ones we love fade away. They're there to watch over us, to 
watch us be grossly incandescent. Thank you. Until next time.